Imagine not watching My Hero Academia when we get episodes like these recently. This arc is shaping up to be incredible, especially with how they're teasing the next arc, which we're going to be ending on, which is without a doubt seemingly the most hyped up thing of the season, and it feels like the wait's gonna be worth it. From really understanding even more about Hawks and like what his purpose is, what he's doing in order to gain information, to arguably one of the best teachers in Dever, teaching not one but three students vastly different but similar ways to overcome their own weaknesses, as he doesn't even have to worry about doing his job. He can simultaneously teach these kids while not suffering the quality of his day-to-day -day activities. I never would have said it weeks ago, even walking into this episode, even while watching a lot of this episode, but Endeavor is without a doubt one of the best teachers we've seen in this show, and I think it's because when you have a character who always felt like he was in All Might's shadow, it's not like he was handed things on a silver platter. He's made a shit ton of mistakes. He's been a horrible father, a horrible husband, but as a hero, especially with his like changing of mentality to be a number one hero, and honestly to be a teacher, he's doing a hell of a good job. And the fact that we have someone who's currently number one, despite him feeling like he didn't earn it, he's someone who's always tried to keep up with All Might, so he's always had to push himself and go plus ultra, right? You know, he's the type of character who works for his success, so is there anyone better to teach these three up-and-coming students? Not really, right? In the current climate that they're experiencing, when all the chaos is bound to happen in a month's time, give or take, this is the type of character you want to like help you push past your limits, and all three of them have vastly different issues. Bakugo is the type of character who's saying, I don't know what my issue is, but I want to overcome it. You have Deku who's saying, oh, I want to be able to control my newfound power. And that gets shut down, saying, hey, you know, rather than trying to overcome this, how about you be able to use your other ability, which is basically the air pressure attack, do that without thinking, and then move on to that, which is such obvious information, but in the moment, and I really didn't see anyone else think about this in my own comment section, it's easy to gloss over. He can use the first ability that he struggled with in Season 1 and 2 without even thinking and killing his body, but the other one he still has to focus on. So it's really good basic, but really easy to miss information that I think a lot of like mentors and things like that in this world wouldn't obviously be able to understand. Hell, just look at the sequence when Deku was explaining his new ability and what his pros and cons are for his abilities. Everyone in the room had no idea what the hell he was talking about. I didn't even really understand what he was talking about. I've been following this character for like a hundred and some odd episodes. But Endeavor immediately understood, right? It's really cool, like especially considering like how Bakko is the type of character to always make excuses. I think Bakko's come a hell of a long way, but he is the excuse machine. And the fact that Endeavor, while literally stopping a truck from killing a woman, can tell Bakko that like you can make all the excuses you want and to all of them basically but if you're not able to get there fast enough someone will die it's not about like losing grades it's really good first-hand experience or in the case of his own son you know he's not winning any father of the year awards and he definitely still has a long way to prove himself but you know someone like Todoroki could use his father's help so the fact that he's saying you know use your flames as a way to like extend your speed on your own custom ice customize your flames, be able to do the similar thing, like it's all basic but it's such good information and I never thought Endeavor had it in him but I mean ever since his transformation he's definitely become one of my favorite characters and just like seeing the the arc and how it wasn't like an overnight switch for Todoroki you know I heard so much shit like back when this happened in the manga and people were freaking out but seriously like this is some A-class character development for Endeavor and is without a doubt one of my personal favorite characters currently in the active series I mean it always changes because you switch your perspectives and focuses, but right now, I mean, Endeavor is definitely in the top 10 for me, hands down, maybe even top 5. Now, in terms of the intro of the episode, it's really interesting seeing Hawks. There's so many little details that I didn't think about in the moment, but the fact that Hawks, it, the reason he stopped the villain, I think it was in the previous episode, it's been two weeks, so forgive me, my memory's a little fuzzy, but when the three of them were trying to stop that one villain that escaped, you know, Hawks came in and saved the day. That was purposely so that the League of Villains would think that they hadn't improved. That is really, really smart. Not only that, when they brought up the fact that he's been handing out a book, I was like, well, he's about to get killed. Nope, they think he's just spreading the word that they want him to, right? So the fact that he's hiding these messages and the fact that the training arc here, you know, having like real world experience with all these students, 
even though it's not maybe the most like publicly accepted idea if the public were to learn about it, the fact that they're literally training a mini army in case the main heroes fail, I mean it says a lot but I think is a really solid plan. Get the new up and coming heroes more prepared for the annihilation and the storm that's coming while also giving the main heroes hopefully an extra shield should they need it. It's really interesting how Hawks, you know, is definitely playing both sides and probably some of the best I've seen. Because he's definitely naturally a shady character, right? Even when you trust in the guy, he just feels like he always has a trick up his sleeve and you never know whose side he's truly on. So he's just naturally perfect for the double crossing scheme. So, you know, I'm sure everyone in the League of Villains room is like, I don't trust this guy, but at the same time, he's getting results. We can kill him need be, but seemingly he hasn't tried anything stupid yet. While in actuality, he has tried something stupid in their eyes. And honestly, it's anyone's guess where we'll go from here. Chaos, of course, because a few weeks back, we did see some form of annihilation, but it's still a coin toss of who will come out on top, and death is sure to be around every which corner, right? My Hero Academia, I mean, I just love how they're structuring this arc here, and how, like, seemingly they're building up into two arcs all at the same time, because I guess, you know, naturally the training arc with Endeavor came after the next arc, but I mean, it really feels like it's flowing really, really solid together. And honestly, Endeavor's voice actor impressed me a lot. Like, it felt like we were getting taught and, like, kind of coached by him. He's not the type of character who just feels like this angry man who's trying to just say, you're going to obey me because I'm the best. Despite being, I think, a little bit of an asshole here and there, I feel like he's humble. I really feel like Endeavor's the type of humble character who, like, maybe not before All Might retired, but ever since, he's really become a changed character. It'll be interesting to see where he'll go and what type of sacrifices he'll make along the way. Honestly, if they continue to, like, just explore things like this, where it's, like, a portion on Hawks and then a portion on Endeavor as we build up into, you know, the League of Villains kind of taking their vengeance upon the world, that would be an amazing formula. I do expect that it won't be every single episode. The preview does indicate we'll probably be switching focus on different characters as well. But still, it just feels like the formula and the structure is just really, really solid. Kind of similar to the previous arc that we experienced in this season. You know, I always said that it felt like season one style content with, you know, season five level experience. And in a similar vein, it feels like we're back into like the training arc and the real world experience that we had in the prior season, but not only with new experiences, but with a bigger and arguably the most dangerous threat that they're ever going to experience, or at least as of right now. So it really feels like this is a season that it shows us what we know, while all at the same time being something vastly different than we could have ever anticipated unless you knew of the source. This season I think is incredible. I know there are some naysayers, but I really think that this season is doing a hell of a good job and it is getting up there for one of my personal favorite moments of My Hero Academia. I mean, it all depends on the end game of this season, if I would place it at the very top of all the seasons, but I mean, I've always said it, I think My Hero gets better every season, and seemingly, this season's gonna be no exception. As always, I love My Hero Academia, maybe it's just because I, hadn't, I didn't have an episode last week that I feel refreshed, but this is probably one of my favorite episodes of this season of My Hero, but I guess we'll see where it goes from here. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below, drop a like to help promote the video, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.